My name is Marcello, and all of us from TSAV would like to welcome you to the Source Audio Video Design Group's YouTube channel. Today we will look at two of the Odyssey flagship series planar magnetic headphones, the LCD-5 versus the Odyssey LCD-4Z. Several of you have been asking for this comparison, and even though the LCD-4Z isn't the newest player on the block, it still is one of Odyssey's current flagship hi-fi headphones and was updated in 2020, so the comparison should be a fun one. I reviewed the LCD-5 a while back on our YouTube channel, but we haven't looked at the LCD-4Z yet, so let's briefly go over the tech specs and design, then we can get into how the two headphones compare. For the comparison portion of the video, I will discuss build quality and comfort, and compare the quality of sound differences between the LCD-5 and the LCD-4Z using the OCC high purity copper cable included with my pair of LCD-5 headphones, listening with several amplifiers, both tube and solid state, such as the Cork Hugo TT2, Cork Hugo 2, Audio Research's i50 integrated amplifier, the Anthem Sound Pendant, and the OG iFi Pro iCAN. With that said, let's jump right in. The LCD-4Z uses a magnesium frame and is a 15 ohm 98 dB per 1 milliwatt planar magnetic open back headphone using Odyssey's double Fluxar magnet array with phase or phase management. The magnets are neodymium N50 with an ultra lightweight nanoscale uniforce diaphragm type that is a mass of 106 millimeters. The frequency response of the LCD-4Z is 5 Hz to 50 kHz with less than 0.1% THD at 100 dB. According to Odyssey, the 4Z requires a minimum of greater than 100 milliwatts, and Odyssey recommends greater than 250 milliwatts for optimal performance. The very well distributed weight of the LCD 4Z is 560 grams and includes a 1.9 meter quarter inch to dual 4 pin mini XLR premium LCD cable, premium travel case, and warranty card. From a looks and feel perspective, I am a fan of the LCD 4Z. The gold Odyssey logo, rods, and accent screws look good with the copper style grills of the cups. While the LCD 5 and the MM500 are all the rage right now from the Odyssey headphone world, I think the LCD 4Z represents some of the old Odyssey world using huge drivers and some of the current lighter weight design direction Odyssey is going with their headphones. The 4Z has a bit more of the former tuning flavor of Odyssey before the LCD 5 was released, with a bit more bass emphasis and not quite as much upper mid range. The weight is still comfortable for my use, although not quite as lightweight as the LCD 5 which weighs 420 grams. I find the heavier weight of the LCD 4Z to be worth the trade off versus the strong clamping force of the LCD 5. Both headphones are built tremendously well and look and feel great. I like the gold accents and copper grill more than the colors of the LCD-5, however I dig the acetate rings of the LCD-5. I wonder what an LCD-4Z and LCD-5's headphone love child would look like. The LCD-4Z pads are larger, plusher, and more comfortable for me than the LCD-5 pads and also do better with not having seal issues when wearing glasses. Compared to the LCD-5's 90mm transducers, there is something special about the larger 106mm driver of the 4Z that creates a large quality of sound that I'll discuss more in the video sound impression section. The impedance of the LCD-5 is 14 ohms with a sensitivity of 90 dB per 1 milliwatt, requiring more power than the LCD-4Z to reach optimal listening performance. However, I would recommend a powerful amp for both headphones that can output healthy levels of current for the best quality of sound they can produce. For the rest of the technical specs, including accessories and pricing of both headphones, check out the links in the video description below to our website. Okay, so let's get into my sound impressions before giving you my overall thoughts. When comparing these two headphones, I found I enjoy both at the respective price points, with some apparent standout differences and a few areas that could use a little adjustment in sound quality for my personal preferences. Without the use of EQ, only using the amps I mentioned earlier, the LCD-4Z tends to sound mid-focused, however more laid back in the upper mid-range than the LCD-5, with more quantity and extension of some of the bass regions, presenting a sound with more punch and slam than that of the LCD-5. Vocals sound a bit richer than the LCD-5 and present on most recordings without sounding shouty or overly forward. The treble of the LCD-4Z sounds less smooth than the LCD-5 and is one of the main areas that I would personally adjust with EQ or tone control if I own them. At the same time, the LCD-5 presents an extremely mid-range focus sound that is faster with more resolution, better imaging, better soundstage definition, more clarity, and more upper mid-range energy that can present vocals on some recordings with a bit too much energy in my experience, a quality however audio mixing engineers or video editors actually may appreciate. To give a bit more depth to my overall sound experiences between these two headphones, I will share my notes from a few tracks while comparing them. Listening to The Weeknd's Take My Breath, the 4Z has a big sound with a vibrant bass line with excellent punch and rumble from the synthesizer. The Weeknd's vocals have a good presence without sounding too forward. 
In comparison, the bass of the LCD-5 sounds a bit tighter with less rumble and overall quantity. The weekend's vocals have a bit more energy during portions of the song when he hits some of the higher notes. Everything sounds a bit smaller in presentation, however more defined with better separation from the five. Listening to Chris Isaac's Wicked Game off his Heart Shaped World album, the guitar strings from the LCD-5 have so much texture, definition, and information when being played. At times, Chris's vocals can sound too forward on parts of the chorus for my preferences, presenting with a bit of shout from the LCD-5. Listening to the LCD-4Z, and the cymbals have noticeably more presence on the song, and Chris's vocals no longer have that slightly shouty quality I heard during certain portions of the chorus when listening to the LCD-5. The guitar strings still have great detail and tone and now have a bit more body. Listening to Snarky Puppy Lingus with the LCD-4Z, the brass at the start of the song has lots of energy and the drums have a huge body and slam to their sound when being played. The imaging is fantastic, allowing me to pick out the instruments on the soundstage. The 4Z sounds fast and accurate with a slightly larger lateral soundstage size than the LCD-5. Listening to the LCD-5, the brass instruments at the beginning of the song don't have quite as much energy on the song, and the perceived slam of the drums isn't as powerful as the 4Z. However, the soundstage sounds better separated by imaging and more clearly defining the instruments. The LCD-5's treble sounds smoother on this track, however, its upper mid-range still presents more forward at times than the LCD-4Z, which some listeners may prefer and others may want to EQ down. The LCD-5 sounds faster during the busier passages of the song, presenting the instruments more clearly and quickly as they are being played. Listening next to Metallica's Enter the Sandman and the lack of slam of the kick drum and body of the electric guitar when listening to the LCD-5 compared to the LCD-4Z is a big miss for me on this song. The superior slam of the 4Z makes this song come to life. Overall, the LCD-5 sounds slightly flat and dull in presenting this track. In comparison, the LCD-4Z sounds larger, the guitar sounds big and bold, and when the kick drum hits, it moves you. The electric guitar has more character and meat on its bones from the 4Z. However, there are some points the treble unevenness is recognizable. The vocals on both headphones have a bit more presence than I prefer during parts of the chorus for this song with my in-house audio chains. Much of the same could be said about my impressions of Thunderstruck from ACDC, whether it's the body and slam of the kick drum or the girth of the electric guitar, the 4Z seems to outclass the LCD-5 for this genre of music. However, the LCD-5 still outclasses the 4Z in speed, soundstage definition, and accuracy, and a smoother sounding treble region for both tracks. So if you listen to this genre of music, you will likely want to play with the EQ with both headphones to get your perfect sound. Listening to Zoos in the morning with the 4Z first, I appreciate the healthier dose of bass over the LCD-5. However, the treble presentation continues to stand out on the 4Z, which could be a little smoother. So this is something to keep in mind as you may want to adjust it some with EQ. Odyssey has some great EQ filters for most of their headphones for use directly through Rune, which in my experience are very enjoyable and provide subtle quality improvements. The LCD-5 present a bit more neutral in their presentation and is a bit rolled off in the bass and treble on this song. So as in all things in audio, this is going to come down to your personal preferences, the music you listen to, and your willingness to use EQ or tone control. Listening to the three tenors in concert from Rome 1990 was a favorite in my house growing up. Listening to song 5, Rondene al Nido, which translates to Swallow in the Nest, a song that can bring me to tears nearly every time I listen to it, reminding me of my imperfect youth, but a small moment of joy growing up when my father and I shared our love for music together. Listening with the LCD-5 and the flute as it comes in over the orchestra as Pavarotti's powerful vocals enter with the orchestra's support. I notice the flute possesses a little less energy at the opening of the song from the LCD-5 and has better separation and imaging of the instruments from the orchestra. However, the larger, more colorful sound and additional body and soul of Luciano's vocals when listening to the LCD-4Z cannot be understated. In conclusion, the LCD-5 is technically the more capable sounding of the two headphones with a better treble presentation for my preferences, more resolution, more micro detail, and a more defined, better imaging soundstage. Both headphones are terrific with their unique quirks, as no headphone is perfect. A proper amplifier, digital analog converter pairing, tone control, and EQ are all things that will be important for getting the best quality of sound out of both headphones in my experience. I encourage you to listen to both headphones with your audio system to understand which headphones may be a better fit for you. We also have both headphones in store at our TSAV headphone bar so that you can listen to them with numerous different amplifiers and DACs. If you're interested in trading up your old headphones or other gently used audio gear for a new set of headphones, check out the links in the video description to our trade up program. And don't forget, we will price match other authorized dealers. 
We hope you enjoyed this video presentation of my experiences comparing these two Odyssey flagship headphones. In the description below, I will link to our website and more info on both headphones and other products discussed during this video. Let's start the conversations in the video comments on what you think of these two headphones. While you are there, smash that like button for us and subscribe today for more headphone comparison videos. Till next time friends, remember, let the music be your guide.